Welcome everyone to Movie Speed Round 2. We're in the future. It's the year 2022. Okay, let's get going. Now listen, if you guys appreciated my last one, y'all aren't ready for this. I'm going to give you guys my ratings and reviews of every single movie I have seen post Kate and Dune. Okay, ready? 3, 2, 1, go. The Guilty, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, one and a half stars. The show Squid Game, four stars. Many Saints of New Work, three and a half stars. There's Someone Inside Your House, three stars. Midnight Mass, three and a half stars. No Time to Die, three and a half stars. Ghostbusters Afterlife, three stars. Eternals, one star. Red Notice, one star. Star. Tick Tick Boom, three and a half stars. The show Hawkeye, two stars. Nightmare Alley is, in my opinion, one of Guillermo del Toro's best films. I feel like it covered aspects he had never touched on before, and he did so with a superb attention to detail. The film follows Bradley Cooper's character Stanton Carlisle as he makes his way into the field of the paranormal by happenstance, all the while carrying his own haunted past into every predicament he finds himself in. The film is no Pan's Labyrinth, but its subject matter of daddy issues, greed, selfishness, and betrayal are told in such a balanced and intimate way that I can't help but recommend this to everyone. Its acting, cinematography, story, and theme are unparalleled. So make sure to check this out if you haven't already. Four stars. Don't Look Up featuring Leonardo DiCaprio, two and a half stars. Spider-Man No Way Home. Hey everyone, so this movie is the third standalone Marvel Spider-Man film. No discount to Doctor Strange. And everyone's favorite of the trilogy, it seems. You already know, to make a spoiler-free review of this film is impossible, but I'ma still try just for fun. The movie does a lot to give this iteration of Peter Parker the same kind of characterization that the other Spider-Man got, and I feel it was successful in doing so. It's a shame it took the third movie to get there, but at least Tom Holland's story is different in that regard. Plot-wise, it's both ambitious and basic. It really helps to work in service of Parker's personal story throughout. It picks up right where the second movie left off and begins a cascade effect of pressures and quick decisions that lead to mistakes which need fixing later down the line. Its story doesn't conclude anything, and we'll likely see more Spider-Man in future MCU films, but it leaves his story in a place both new and familiar. I'm not one of those people contesting no Way Home is the new best Spider-Man film. It's still the Spider-Verse, of course, but I do see how people can love it like that. To me, though, it was simply the best of this trilogy. I don't know if they're going to plan a fourth standalone Tom Holland Spider-Man movie, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. All in all, it was a very good movie, and it gets a three and a half stars from me. The Matrix, Resurrections, Teardrop, two stars. Disney's Turning Red, two stars. The Butt Man, three and a half stars. It is the second best Batman film. Get out of here. Everything, everywhere, all at once. This movie slaps and y'all Know it. Granted, it's not for everyone, but for those who click with weird stories, it'll click hard. It does an amazing job at conveying a complex concept like a multiverse in an intimate and digestible way. It crams comedy, action, family drama, and love without feeling like it's doing any cramming. The movie succeeds in every avenue it touches. The only issue is it doesn't bring up accountability for a certain someone, but given the plethora of other balls it's juggling, I forgive it. This is an amazing movie, and I would highly recommend it to everyone. Four to five stars. Sonic 2, three stars. And finally, The Northman. It's a movie that'll make you want to look into Norse mythology and history, specifically to see if Valkyries had braces. No, but this film is very much exactly what it is on paper. It wears its message on its face. But that's not to say the film is too simplistic because of it. Like many grandiose epics, the film tries to balance out what it wants to carry and let go. Its action sequences are done superbly, the acting is visceral and animalistic, and the twist I honestly didn't see coming. Its plot is simple, and ending, while in my opinion a bit lackluster, holds its its essence as a whole. It's as brutalist as it is beautiful. A cub becomes a wolf and fate is carried out. Three and a half stars. Okay, and that covers it. What did y'all think? Do you guys have differing opinions? Have you not seen some of those films? Have you seen it? Let me know. And as always, thank you guys so much for giving me your time, and I'll see y'all later. Peace. Hi, John Zanna here. Thank you for watching the JillVan.com. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you do, all your dreams will come true. I like ice cream. All hail Canada. Bye bye.